stay on the issue of education. When you think of the University of North Carolina, not the University of Berkeley, North Carolina, a few things come to mind. Maybe it's the fact that it's considered one of the public ivies. Maybe you think of their picturesque campus in Chapel Hill. Or if you're like me, you think of Tar Heels basketball and a young Michael Jordan wearing baby blue and launching his legacy as the GOAT. It's always been a notable school, but never, never thought of it as thoroughly unpatriotic until today. A group of nearly 700 of the university's employees and professors, 700, recently signed a letter warning against new legislation in the North Carolina State House, including a bill mandating that all students, this is the mandate, all students at the University of North Carolina take one course in American history. Not a bad idea, right? Well, don't tell that to these professors in their ivory towers. They think learning about America is, and this is their words, indoctrination. In the letter of these 700, they say, quote, if enacted, we believe that these measures will further damage the reputation of UNC and the state of North Carolina. So we're damaging the reputation of the state for learning about American history. By the way, I'm sure they teach the 1619 version anyway. So what is the required reading for the course that they're taking such issue with? Well, you're not going to believe it. By their standards, college kids should not be learning about the U.S. Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. Maybe if the legislature suggested that those documents be read aloud by a drag queen, then maybe these 700 would be on board with that. Or what about the Emancipation Proclamation or the Federalist Papers? They're required reading for the course as well. Never mind that the document quite literally freed the slaves. It might upset some purple-haired, gluten-free gender studies majors. So UNC says, nope, it's got to go. I mean, for crying out loud, even MLK's letter from a Birmingham jail and the Gettysburg Address are being protested because they might, quote, trigger the students. The left loves to say Republicans don't want to teach history. Ban books. But Democrats don't want your kids learning about this. King pens his now celebrated letter from Birmingham jail, defending the resistance of African-Americans. In solitary confinement, he writes, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. The letter becomes a touchstone for the civil rights movement. They don't even want us teaching Martin Luther King Jr. to the students of UNC. Is this where we're at? Let's turn to 2024 GOP candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. Vivek, thank you very much for being here. I'll ask you that question. Is this where we're at? I mean, the employees protest if U.S. history is simply required. Pete, this is part of a broader assault on American identity itself. Our problem isn't that we have civic education. It's that we don't have enough of it. And here's an interesting fact, all right? If you're an immigrant and you want to become a citizen of this country, you actually have to pass a test. Among the questions included in that test include things like, how many amendments are there in the U.S. Constitution? There's 27. Who were the authors of the Federalist Papers? John Jay, Alexander Hamilton, James Madison. If immigrants who want to actually immigrate to this country and become citizens have to know these things, I think there should be no objection to actually teaching it to somebody who's a student at a public university. So don't believe that this is about anything other than an assault on American history itself, because there is this anti-American strain, Pete, and you know it well, mm -hmm. that wishes to apologize for the existence of a nation founded on our ideals. And I refuse to do it. And I think we need more people willing to stand up and say that. No, it's 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 a desire to completely erase our history and our heritage sins warts and all it's bad from the beginning throw it out because if you don't teach it and you don't understand it you fall prey to the complete mischaracterization of it i mean this is something that will manifest itself in politics later on when these people become voters as well and Pete, that is why I go to college campuses when I'm touring this country on the campaign trail. What I see in young people is they are so hungry for a cause. They're hungry for purpose and That's meaning. Right. They are lost. We can give that to them in the form of this American national identity. 
That's why I'm running. I'm the first millennial ever to run for president as a Republican. Part of the reason why is I want to reach those college students because I think they can actually come along in the pro-American movement as long as we get these professors and the managerial class out of the way. I'm actually Man, hopeful if, that their hunger for purpose will lead us back to if America. If you could do that, that would be a Herculean feat because right now they find their purpose and identity in their gender identification or in affecting mm -hmm. the weather. I don't know how we make that pivot. I mean... Maybe part of it is a civic We're going to do it. Hey, if that's We're going to do it. That's if, a starting point. If that, We're going to make it happen. And I've heard you Thank give you. a speech on this topic before, quite poignantly, drawing on history. We need more people articulating it. Vivek, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Pete. You got appreciate it. Appreciate that. All right, coming up, would you hire this person to work for your company?